Hello everybody, this is Gary. Today is September 11th, 2019, the 18th anniversary of the attack on the World Trade Center in New York City on September 11th, 2001. Um, I bring this up because a question has been raised by someone who left a comment in the comment section of one of my videos. Um, how does a person who's psychotic, schizophrenic, schizoaffective, bipolar disorder, psychotic depression, um, there are many different psychotic disorders. In my case, we're talking about schizophrenia, schizoaffective, somewhere along the schizophrenia spectrum. Um, and psychosis, again, usually means you're hallucinating, you have delusions and beliefs that are not real. And even if somebody points out those beliefs to you with evidence, you still hold on to those ideas, even though they're wrong. Perfect example is thinking that you're Napoleon or Jesus Christ or Adolf Hitler or whatever it might be. Um, well, you think people are following you and they're not following you, or spying on you and they're not spying on you. It's not that people don't sometimes follow other people or spy on them, but you can't always be sure that it's actually happening. Um, but what the hell does September 11th have to do with schizophrenia? Well, um, I was thinking in broader terms, and this was the comment in my comment section was how does a schizophrenic person, and the person that asked this question specifically mentioned schizophrenia, but it applies to all psychosis. How does a person with schizophrenia or psychotic disorder engage in politics, religion, social debate, racism, um, feminism, politics in general, without becoming violent? In other words, how does a person who's got a psychosis and has lost touch with reality, how do they avoid themselves getting involved in extremist violence? Not all extremely violent people, extremists politically, religiously, racially, not all of them are mentally ill. Um, but I would hazard a guess that a good majority of the mass shooters from Columbine to Sandy Hook to Virginia Tech and a hundred other mass shootings over the past several years, in the United States at least, um, a lot of those people are mentally ill. So how do you navigate believing in something, whether it be political, religious, social, right or left wing or center, how do you deal with politics without indulging in violence or suicide? In other words, how does a crazy person, a person with psychosis, deal with a crazy world and how do you stay mentally healthy in a world that doesn't seem to be mentally healthy um it's not an easy question to answer um one of the things that controls my urge to commit violence is that i spent one night in jail for a fist fight once and that was enough to warn me that jail is not a pleasant place to be i got my ass kicked in several times um so i would imagine that prison in the united states is worse than jail. Jail is just the local thing. Prison is where the big boys go when they commit real serious crimes. And if I couldn't handle a night in jail, I wouldn't be able to handle a night in prison without committing suicide. So for me, not becoming violent is simply a matter of common sense and survival. I would not survive in prison. I would not survive long term in jail. Um, and I would probably commit suicide. I don't want to commit suicide. Um, under every other circumstance, I don't see myself committing suicide. In prison or jail, I do see it. I wouldn't be able to handle it. Um, so for me, political violence, becoming violent um, with my political opponents, my political enemies, makes no sense because it robs me of my freedom. Not to mention the morality of harming other people in a republic that's supposed to have a peaceful transfer of power through elections. Violence generally is unacceptable. Um, you have groups like Antifa or Antifa, however it's pronounced, who use political violence all the time. They're far left extreme, extreme left wing violence. There's far right wing violence. A lot of the mass shooters might have been far right wing um, shooters, but there's also been left wing shooters as well, mass killings. Um, of 
course, not all mass shootings have anything to do with politics or race or social issues, but some of them do. And for me, staying sane means keeping myself free. That is, free from jail, free from prison, and still expressing my opinion online. That doesn't mean there won't be consequences in some other form. If I made a video, for example, saying I was a white supremacist, I'm now just using this as an example. If I made a video saying that I was a white supremacist, I have the right in the United States to say that. But that doesn't mean there wouldn't be repercussions of people criticizing me, insulting me, threatening me. Um, so that's another thing that helps me keep my behavior under control is that to some degree I am sensitive to other people's criticisms and insults. And maybe we all should be to some extent. It helps control our behavior. Um, when you get caught up in thoughts that you're right about a particular subject, even if you're clearly wrong, and you carry a gun or several guns into a mess area where there's a lot of people, and then you start killing them because you think that politically or religiously or racially you have a right to do that, um, that might come from a mental illness. A person with mental illness doesn't necessarily have any insight into the fact that they're ill and the crimes they're about to commit are illegal and immoral. Um, I am bragging here. Um, I do have insight to my own illness enough to know that I don't want to go to jail and not commit suicide because my sister committed suicide with a double barrel shotgun to her head. Um, and also I'm an atheist. So giving up my freedom for a political cause or a religious cause or a racial cause through violence would only seek to destroy the only life I have and I'm ever going to get. By being, put, by being put in jail or prison, even if I didn't commit suicide, no one wants to spend 20 or 30 or 40 years in prison. Um, I might as well commit suicide if that happened. Um, I think your life is pretty much over if you get 20 or 30 or 40 years in jail. Um, and in some states in the United States, the death penalty. Um, mental illness, something I have sympathy for, I have a mental illness, but mental illness is not something that's an excuse for horrible, illegal, immoral behavior. Um, so for me, staying sane in an insane world means not lowering myself to the level of people in politics are, who are willing to use violence. That could be the left wing, like with Antifa and the black block rioters that wear black masks, black, black, I'm sorry, black clothes, black boots, and then they terrorize their political opponents, be they on the center or the right wing. And the right wing, of course, is guilty of violence themselves, sometimes through mass shootings, sometimes through rioting, another causes of violence. Um, for me, staying sane simply means saying my opinion when I can, not being afraid of using my freedom of speech, but at the same time, knowing my limits, picking my battles, and knowing that I don't want to go to jail or even a mental hospital for 30 years. I mean, fuck, back in the 1980s when I was a teenager, um, John Hinckley Jr., I believe his name was, was psychotic, schizophrenic, and he shot Ronald Reagan, who survived the attack. Um, and then Hinckley spent like 30, 35, 40 years in a mental hospital, never actually convicted for shooting the president. And he got out of the mental hospital a decade or so ago. Um, I'm pretty sure he's still alive, living with his parents. But here's somebody who was severely mentally ill, acted in a violent political manner, and never actually got convicted. I mean, you shoot the fucking president of the United States and you don't get convicted. He lost his freedom for 35 years. Um, but now he's out again. Um, apparently no danger to other people, according to the courts. They wouldn't let him out if they thought he was a danger. Um, but not all political violence or social violence or racial violence is... Uh, caused by mental illness and not lowering yourself to the level of people who are violent and dangerous and violating other people's rights. I just don't see myself 
engaging in pointless behavior because it will rob me of my freedom or my life. That's not to say I'm afraid to say things politically or socially, religiously, racially. Um, it's a very confusing world we live in. And I'm sort of just rambling here because I really don't know how to answer that question. How does a psychotic person take the stress of the political environment that we live in, all the violence, all the racism, all the extreme right, the extreme left? How does a psychotic person navigate all that without engaging in those behaviors themselves or just simply staying sane um, in a world that's ripping you left and right and back and forth in the political arena um, and other people committing acts of violence. How do you stay sane without committing suicide? How do you stay sane without becoming violent yourself? Um, I'm not sure that I have the answer to that question. Like I said, I vote. I try to engage in causes in a proactive manner that I believe in. If I believe in a particular person doing their work on YouTube and I want to give them money, I will give them money. Um, because that's a way of me engaging and supporting a political or social, religious, or racial cause and not become violent, but just to give money to those things that I believe in. Try and stay engaged with voting and politics and um, understanding that I don't control the world. And I think that's the key. Some of the people who are mentally ill who become violent think that they have a right to control the world or control other people's behavior through violence. And Tifa is a perfect example of that. I'm picking on the left wing here. The right wing does this too. Um, but I don't know. Engaging in political violence for the mentally ill doesn't make any sense. It would only rob you of your job, your freedom, your home. Um, I don't know. I'm just sort of like rambling here. If anybody's got any ideas, because I think I've just made a video where I've said absolutely nothing of value. Um, I try to, try to stay engaged in political causes, like I said, through donations, through making videos other than about schizophrenia, be about be it be about religion or politics or race. In all of those areas, I consider myself to be in the political center. And I think it's sad that the political center has disappeared for the far right and the far left. The, the wackos taking control. The left has firm hold on the Democratic Party. The far right has a firm grip on the Republican Party. And people like my father, who were middle class political moderates, are vastly disappearing and it's harder than ever to stay sane and not become violent in a world where everybody else seems to have the desire to commit violence either in a mass shooting or the far left people wearing masks and hitting people in the head with bike locks padlocks and sock and whacking them in the head and making them bleed and cracking their skull all of that is behavior that can rob you of your freedom your own personal freedom. Not only is it immoral to do those things, but it's also something that's going to restrict your personal freedom. And believe me, I've had enough of restriction on my personal freedom um, every time I go into a mental hospital for four weeks. Because once you're in, even if I bring myself to the hospital, once you're in, you don't get out until the doctor says you get out or the courts. Um, but usually I didn't go to court. I went to court once to get out of the hospital. I lost the case. Um, and was let go a few days later by the psychiatrist anyways. Um, so the times that I've lost my physical freedom has pretty much only been when I've called the police and ambulance to go to the psychiatric emergency room and if they actually decide to admit me into the hospital, even if I sign myself in. Um, so I know that I wouldn't want to lose my freedom by going to jail spending 40 years in a mental hospital like Kinkley did when he shot Reagan. Um, it's not easy to navigate politics when you're mentally ill. And I'm not sure I have any answers for any of this. I'm sort of rambling here, but 
I don't know what else to say. If people have suggestions, comments, ideas, subscribe, like, share, comment. Because um, I'm not sure I said anything valiant in this video. I'm tired. I didn't get any sleep last night. Um, I did go out this morning with some friends and had breakfast. Like I said, my other videos, getting out of the house is extremely important. Um, and also another thing, I, I think I can say that one of the things you have to do if you're mentally ill is separate your personal life from your political life. Be it politics about race or religion or Democrat, Republican, far left, far right. On some level, you have to be able to detach from those things in your personal life and go on doing the things in your personal life that you do. If you're married and have kids, you raise your kids. If your kids are going to college, you watch them go to college. If you have no kids and you've got other things keeping you busy, like a job or a social cause, a favorite charity, you have to be able to do things on a daily basis, routinely. Get up, shave, take a shower, put on clean clothes, Go out and do your job, meet with your friends, live your life, live with your family, and do all the personal things that you need to do that have nothing to do with politics. And you have to be able to separate your personal life from politics. I guess that's the best advice I can give. Um, excuse me, it's very hot in here. And I just uh, took my air conditioner out of the window because it's September. We're not quite cooled down yet. Um, but I had to take the air conditioner out of the window at some point, so I did that yesterday. So it's very warm in here, and I'm sweating. Um, so you have to be able to get up in the morning, brush your teeth, shave, put on clothes, go to work, go to school, or whatever it is you do during the day. Cook dinner for your family. Bring home a paycheck. Raise your children if you have children. Follow your religious practices, if that's what you're into. Um, and be able to separate that from politics. I think it's a dangerous mix when you mix your personal life with politics or race or religion. Not that you should never talk about those things. But on some idea, some level, you have to be able to compartmentalize. You have to be able to separate in a box your personal life from political life. And know that sometimes there are consequences for what you say online. Even if you have the right to say them, you may get criticized, insult, threatened. I'm sure there's very many famous people involved in politics who get death threats and threats of violence all the time. For example, the atheist Sam Harris has said he's gotten death threats from Muslims, from far right wing anti Semitic extremists. Um, so he knows his consequences for his speech, but that doesn't mean he backs down or changes his opinions because he's afraid of violence. Um, just understand that there will be blowback on a lot of things you might say politically or socially or racially or religious matters or other social issues. Um, other people don't necessarily have to respect your opinion. The law only actually requires that they tolerate your opinion, not respect it. Um, so there will be blowback a lot of the time. And part of remaining sane is understanding ahead of time that there might be blowback from people who disagree with your opinion on a particular subject. And regardless of how angry you might get over it, don't commit acts of violence and suicide because neither one of those things accomplishes anything. I guess that's all I have to say for now. This is an extremely long video. I usually don't make them this long. But I'm tired and I didn't know what else to make this video about. If anybody has specific questions or suggestions on how to refine this discussion so I'm not so confused when I'm talking about it, tell me some points to bring up in my next video. Tell me some issues that you believe are relevant to this topic. I'm open to suggestions because I have no answers right now. 